What's going on everybody? Lee Dickey here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Beach and Speaks podcast. And surprise, surprise, I'm on camera. This week, what would my ultimate Christmas movie look like? How would I create it, produce it, where would it be set? All that good stuff coming up right now. All right, so my ultimate Christmas movie, who would be in it, what would it look like, where would it be set, and basically how would I create this monolithic holiday entertainment type thing right here and right now. So basically this is a lot of ideas off the top of my head. There is some planning to this episode, but it just it's basically a lot of ideas off the top of my head. And yes, like some of the casting choices... I've had set in stone since I was a child, okay? So this is like a lifelong thing for me. Um, Firstly, I would want to play a toy store owner. I'd want to have it like set in a big city, either my hometown of Toronto or, you know, New York City. I wouldn't want it set in a place like California just because, you know, when I think of Christmas, I don't think California is not the first place that or the first state that kind of, you know, jumps out at me, right? It, it's not one of those places where I'm like, ooh, let's go to California for Christmas, or like, you know, within the, the, I think the second home alone is where they went to Florida. It just, a warm climate to where to spend Christmas, where it, like it typically does not snow, unless you're in like the mountains in California, it just, it doesn't scream like, let's take a, you know, let's set a Christmas movie here. Or let's spend Christmas here or places like Arizona or whatever like that. It's just, it's not something that speaks to me or it's not something that like jumps out at me, right? So it wouldn't be set in California. It would either be set in Toronto, Canada, my hometown, or New York City. And New York City, simply because I think a lot of movies and, you know, as such, us as viewers kind of like romanticize New York, I think. Because in several films or even in, you know, places like shows like Saturday Night Live, it's just, it's kind of romanticized and it's kind of just like the filmmakers who, you know, film in New York, they just, they show you the best bits of it and it just seems to be like this all-encompassing, ultimate, wonderful place to go. And to be honest with you, for me, like setting the film in New York would be cool simply because Home Alone 2 is my ultimate, like, is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. So I'd want to have it set either in New York. But, I mean, like, I am impartial to my own hometown. And, I, I you know, I'd want to have it set in Toronto just because yeah, I, get to, I get to film at home. You know, I get to be home with people I, you know, grew up around and have known my entire life. That would be cool to either have it set here in Toronto or in New York, just because, like, you know, Home Alone 2 is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. In terms of the casting roles, I would take lead as the male co-star, or male lead and sort of executive producer of said project. At least I would want to. Uh, I would want to play a toy store owner of this sort of family-run toy store. Again, Harkening back to Home Alone 2, because as I've said several times already in the first few minutes, Home Alone 2 is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. It's a lot like Duncan's toy chest from the second Home Alone. I would want something like that, right? And, you know, to have it set somewhere like either in my hometown or in New York City would be just awesome, okay? I'd want to play like this sort of the owner of a family-run toy store that's been in the family for generations and has been in the town or the city forever and you know say like this is the last year or two have been particularly not wonderful in terms of business and there's this giant corporation that wants to buy us out and basically put their own sort of like big box corporate toy store or corporate holiday store somewhat in that space. That's what I would want. That's how I would want it set. I like, you know, 
And I, I'd want it to have sort of like a Hallmarky feel, uh, feel, like they do with all the Hallmark films that come on, especially around this time of year, especially around the holidays. So, you know, having it set in a toy store in, you know, a big city, like either my hometown of Toronto, uh, Canada, or New York, and then have it, you know, be sort of a generational thing where it was passed down from, you know, the people above me, and then suddenly I've got it, but business hasn't been great the last, like, year or two, and we just were hoping not to sell, but I mean, like, that's the thing, and then this corporation wants the space because they want to put their own big box store in that space. That's how I would want it set. That's what I would want my role in this film to be. So, I mean, you know... Who doesn't love toys around the holidays? I, I wouldn't want it set all too modern. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want something like, say, a, a video game store or anything like that. I, I would want something that would, like, give me, you know, Duncan's cho Toy Chest 2.0, right? Give me this giant toy store and then have it be sort of threatened by, like, corporate where they're like, you know, your numbers aren't adding up and then business is tight, business is slow, you haven't made much, why don't we, you know, help you out, and then you can just sell to us and what have you. That's kind of what I would want for my role and, like, where most of the central plot of this film takes place. The other lead part in this project that would be my ultimate Christmas movie would go to a local actress, voiceover artist. She's incredibly talented, really funny, absolutely gorgeous. And I first met her when we were at the same television station years ago. She had done uh, on-air reporting at that time. She filled in for the regular hosts of some shows I was working on. And she's just absolutely talented, absolutely funny, and absolutely gorgeous her name is michelle rivard so i hope she doesn't mind the you know i would want her as my female lead in this whatever would be my ultimate christmas movie it's just because a she's super talented b she's really funny and not to mention like she's drop dead gorgeous like she's absolutely beautiful so you know and knowing her personality a little bit and having worked with her in the past somewhat, I have no doubt that if I were to give her, say, a script with, I guess, me attached as the executive producer and sort of this plot, I think, I mean, she would knock it out of the park because she's got that type of personality and she's got, like, absolute wit and she just has this personality that will light up a room and sort of take over and that's just perfect for this kind of over-the-top thing that I'm going for, and it's fantastic. I think she would do an absolutely awesome job if I were to ever come up with a script or if Hallmark ever threw something in my direction, whoever. You know, I would want to have myself and Michelle kind of, you know, uh, star as co-stars in this whatever would be my ultimate Christmas movie. In terms of how our introduction, I guess, in the film would take place, myself and Michelle, there, if she were to be my co-star, I, again, as I said in the beginning, would play the owner of this toy store that is akin to Duncan's Toy Chest from the second Home Alone movie. And I guess, you know, to introduce Michelle into the film, like, I would have her play the corporate type, the business type to where she would work for said evil corporation or whatever, or the corporation that wants to, wants to buy out, you know, this generational, generationally run uh, toy store. And she would just come in and make an offer and then we just go through, say, this movie for 90 minutes where she would see how, you know, this toy store would do things or has done things for generations and then 
slowly harken back to say like her childhood or whatever have like certain memories flood back in and then we you know we get to know each other a bit warm up to each other and then sort of you know have her kind of melt away a kind of hard exterior I guess in terms of just not just this isn't just about you know getting me as a toy store owner to sell out to her company it's just okay this is about Christmas it's more than just the money for this guy let's see what else can happen there so I guess that would be like the introduction that I would want in this script for somebody say like my co-star Michelle or Michelle if you know this thing were to ever become real and I just think you know I off the top of my head that like that would probably be the intro that I would use to um you know introduce Michelle's character into this film all right so starting off the supporting roles casting these supporting roles for what my ultimate Christmas film would be I would want to go with another local personality and when I say local I mean like Toronto or southern Ontario because that's where I happen to be right so starting off the supporting roles I'd go with Will Nash now Will Nash is a, uh, a radio personality who is now based out of Barrie, Ontario. But uh, I've had the pleasure of interviewing him. He was on my podcast, the Beats and Speaks podcast, last year, last November. And he is just super positive, super upbeat, loves Christmas. So that's a plus. And, you know, I think he'd be great. Honestly, I'd probably cast him in the role of, say, someone like an employee at the store you know who would probably he would probably handle like promotions and like getting out there and meeting the people and handing out flyers or coupons or what have you and occasionally helping me like stock stock boxes or you know decorate the store or like set up the store and stuff like that but I would probably I want to cast Will Nash in some sort of supporting role just because he's a super positive b a pleasure to talk to C, loves Christmas, and this is casting my ultimate Christmas film. So, Will Nash, if I ever get this thing off the ground or I ever make headway into getting this short, right now, this fictional ultimate Christmas film made, like, you have a part, sir, just to let you know. When it comes to other characters that I would be surrounded by or that Michelle's character would be surrounded by, I would want to have, as I guess cast as another employee at the store, uh, that I would be running, Francia Razia, who was on uh, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, currently stars in Grownish. She's done a plethora of television films like uh, Christmas Bounty with The Miz of WWE fame, Mike Mizanin. And I think she'd be perfect to work alongside, say, Will and myself at the store when it comes to, say, surrounding. Michelle with other co-workers at this giant corporate firm that wants to buy out said toy store that I run. I would want to get Autumn Reeser and uh, Rachel Boston involved. Rachel Boston was most recently, I think, she had a recurring role on SEAL Team. And uh, she was in Holiday High School Musical, which, you know, bonus fact, was one of those... Christmas films that I was just flipping channels and saw it, you know, and for some reason that just, it kind of relaxed me because I wasn't always like, I didn't necessarily like Christmas all that much up until I saw this film, uh, Holiday High School Musical, although I saw it under, I think the title Christmas Crush uh, years ago, and it just kind of like, I was like, yeah, let's just focus on what Christmas is really about, so I first saw her in that and, you know, went down, say, the Hallmark rabbit hole when it came to, like, Rachel Boston's filmography, and, you know, she was perfect. And, again, Autumn Reeser, she was on The O.C., she, Entourage, Hawaii Five-0, Human Target. She's done several Hallmark films, and I think she'd be perfect to star in, like, just as a supporting role. Like, that would be awesome as well, you know. So those two are probably another two people that come to mind, both Rachel Boston and Autumn Reeser. More supporting roles to fill out, I guess, what New York City would be, or say Toronto, if we were to film it in either location. Just to fill out the city, I would want to get 
couple Canadians involved at least. So Andrew Walker, who was on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He's done a plethora of television films. Snowden Christmas for Lifetime, Love and Design, Bottled with Love, uh, Appetite for Love, all for Hallmark, but he is a Hallmark Channel television film mainstay, and he's, I think he's originally from Montreal, so I would want to get him involved in terms of the other more Canadians that I want to get involved, uh, Cameron Matheson, who again is a Hallmark mainstay, he did the uh, Murder, She Baked series for Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. I think he's a co-host on uh, Home and Family for the Hallmark Channel. He was on All My Children. And to get both of those guys involved would be a dream for me. I think um, Cameron's originally from Sarnia. And like I said, I think um, Andrew is originally from Montreal. So to have both of them involved would be cool too. Just to say, fill out the setting and fill out the town. Um, I would also want to get in terms of more um, actresses involved. Like, I, I want to get, like, Taylor Cole involved would be cool. To have her involved would be nice, uh, right? Like, she's done several Hallmark films. I think Appetite for Love, where she co-starred with Andrew Walker. Um, she had a recurring role on CSI Miami, and she does the Ruby Herring Mysteries movies currently for Hallmark. And, you know, to have her... I think I would cast her and Andrew Walker as a couple and then Cameron Matheson would be there basically to fill out the town but you know I, I would just want to get all these guys involved who had done say like Hallmark films and who are have the body of work in terms of like the acting right um, alongside myself and uh, Michelle Rivard I think it would just be awesome to turn it into like this giant ensemble kind of Christmas love fest, if you will. But I would definitely cast um, Taylor Cole and Andrew Walker as a couple in this film, just to kind of fill out the roles within said ultimate Christmas movie. Jonathan Bennett would be another cast choice. I would want him to kind of be in the camp of Michelle's character, where like Autumn Reeser and Rachel Boston, they're cast his co-workers and such I would want to cast Jonathan Bennett as kind of Michelle's assistant who kind of does everything she says and kind of yes ma'am no problem we'll just get it done and I don't know I don't want to say he's kind of scared of her but I mean I want her to have like this very powerful presence that like by the end of the movie is kind of like chipped away at where it's just kind of you know, we get rid of that hard exterior. I want her to have, like, this hard exterior, all business, all the time. And then, you know, I want to have Jonathan Bennett there as her assistant, who's kind of trying to open up her eyes and her mind to Christmas is more than just, say, buying out, like, this little mom and pop, you know, generationally run toy store. And it's just, it's more than just like the corporate dollar and the corporate bottom line. So that, that's what I would want. I want him to be basically her assistant who is kind of afraid because it kind of has to walk on eggshells a little bit, but is also trying to open up her eyes to what Christmas actually is. And I suppose like if you got, you know, Rachel Boston and Autumn Reeser in there too, to not necessarily chip away at the thing but just kind of like drop subtle hints to Michelle's character to just like Christmas is more than just this corporate bottom line Christmas is about family it's about giving it's about you know helping those in need and I think that that would just be a perfect role for Jonathan and then Autumn Reeser and Rachel Boston in there as well let's get to the cameos so in terms of the cameos what I would want to do is get as many references to old, I don't want to say old, but I mean like classic films that I kind of grew up with. So like I'd want to get um, Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story, Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci, who were Harry and Marv in the first two Home Alone films, along with 
Macaulay Culkin, who was Kevin McAllister. I'd want to get him involved as well, just as a cameo, just to show up. You know what I mean? Like, just to sprinkle them throughout as, like, in the crowd shots, as extras, kind of. And then, you know, um, and this is strictly for me, and this is just to hear him talk. I would want to get Vin Diesel. Give him one line, just to hear him talk. Something that just sort of, like, I don't know, and I'm not meaning any disrespect by this, but, like, kind of cast him in a Buckingham Palace, like, guard in a way, where it's just... He's got, he's like standing somewhere and it's just Merry Christmas. And it just, just to hear him talk, I'd want to cast like Vin Diesel in sort of like a small bit part, you know, but, um, you've got, you know, Macaulay Culkin, who was Kevin McAllister in the first two Home Alone films, Daniel Stern, Joe Pesci, Harry and Marv from the first two Home Alone films, Peter Billingsley, who was Ralphie in A Christmas Story. I think that would be awesome to be honest with you um and another fun sort of cameo for me i would want to cast kurtwood smith who was in the i think the, the first robocop and he's probably best known at least to people of my age as red foreman from that 70s show i would want to cast him in sort of like this pg or if we had to go g like version of Red Foreman in the movie just like if say like you know he's walking his dog he loses control of the leash lets go dog runs away and then he's got a coffee in his hand bumps into somebody the coffee you know spills on his jacket I would want to cast I, I would want to get him into a point to a point where he gets so upset but because it's Christmas and it's set at Christmas, he would have no choice but to be happy. Like, that would be what I would probably envision for Kurtwood Smith. Sort of like the opposite. He's getting to that Red Foreman point where he's just going to say whatever he wants, but because it's Christmas, he's got to hold it all in. Like, that would be something that I would want in this film, just to have Kurtwood Smith, I guess, in the role of Red Foreman, but not actually be as... Red Foreman as the actual Red Foreman character, like that would be cool, right? So, you know, um, a few people that I want on this film, but sadly have passed away, uh, which is unfortunate. There are just a few. James Avery, who was Uncle Phil on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or Philip Banks. Or he, he, I think one of his first roles was as, as a dancing extra in, which is which, in um, what is my favorite film of all time, The Blues Brothers, by the way, and then uh, he was the voice of Shredder in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series that ran from '87 to 1996. So, just a little bit of his work, and then like John Candy, I'd want to get him in there. The Great Outdoors, he had a, a small part in Home Alone, he was in the Blues Brothers, SCTV, right? I mean, it's John Candy, Uncle Buck. And then, and this one actually shocked me a little bit when I heard that he had passed away. John Hurd, who played Peter McAllister in the first two Home Alone films. I would want to get him involved, and maybe even bring in Catherine O'Hara, who was Kate McAllister. In uh, the first two Home Alone films, that would be cool too. And then maybe uh, Kieran Culkin, who is Macaulay's little brother. He was fuller in the first two Home Alone films. And he also st uh, had a supporting role in the first two Father of the Bride films from both 1991 and 1995, respectively. And that's pretty much what the entire cast would look like. Like, if I needed to fill out more, I could but that's pretty much what the principal and like every cast role would look like in what my ultimate Christmas film would be. So I hope you guys just, there's your look at what the cast would look like. All right. So in terms of like locations where I'd want to film in either Toronto or New York or whatever major metropolitan city, I'd want this to be set in a major metropolitan city. So in whatever city we set this thing in, whether it be Toronto or New York, 
these are a few of the places I would want to film. In terms of New York, I would want to film, not necessarily inside, but I would want to get a shot of Madison Square Garden in the film, uh, the Empire State Building, and 30 Rock. Like, if need be, I would probably want to set uh, Michelle's character's office in 30 Rock. Just because, you know, and if I could somehow, like, wrangle Lauren Michaels into letting... Uh, us get like sort of sprinkling in bits and pieces of say Saturday Night Live alum and or current cast members that would be pretty cool but like to get 30 Rock is kind of like a must if I were to film this thing in New York Madison Square Garden the Empire State Building um, Penn Station would be cool too it just I mean those are just a few off the top of my head a couple places that I would want to film it had we you know, if we were to set this thing in New York City. Places in Toronto that I would like to, say, get in this fictional film. Um, maybe one day, you know, it'll become a reality. I don't know. But if I were to shoot this thing in Toronto, of course, you got to get a shot of the CN Tower. I've got to get a shot of the Rogers Center in there. Um, you know, I mean, if it was a baseball film, a Rogers Center interior would be a must but this is a christmas film but who's to say we can't turn it into a baseball film as well i don't know maybe uh but a shot of the cn tower a shot of the roger center formerly known as the sky dome um, and then you know i would probably want to get a gala scene like a night gala uh, scene in this film so i would want to film it in Either the Sheraton Hotel or the Marriott, because they both have just beautiful, it, they're both beautiful buildings. So I figure, why not have like this grandiose kind of ballroom scene in either of those buildings? But those would be the two, um, you know, if we were to ever get like a gala scene film, I'd want to get like the Sheraton Hotel involved and then like you get. The Marriott. I mean, one owns the other. So, you know, you'd probably just have to make a phone call. And um, that would be pretty cool for me. And then get a shot of, say, Nathan Phillips Square or, you know, City Hall or both. I mean, like, let's just probably film it. If we're doing, say, a Christmas film, why not get a shot? Why not film parts of it at, like, the Nathan Phillips Square, like, Ice Rink? That would be pretty cool, too. But those are just a couple things off the top of my head like if I was to film this thing in Toronto then I would probably want to have a gala scene inside either the Sheraton Hotel or the Marriott and then get a skating scene at the Nathan Phillips Square ice rink and then get some shots of you know the CN Tower uh, the Rogers Center formerly the Sky Dome and then city hall and even old city hall too but that's just a few of the must-have toronto shots i guess if i were to ever make this fictional ultimate christmas film lastly i would probably well not that i would probably i would definitely cast people from my personal life in just these little like crowd parts and bit parts right just the people that i still talk to from any level of school or like the friends I made in the radio and television industry and in this entertainment media world. Um, even some of my podcast friends whose podcasts I've appeared on or who have appeared on my show. I'd want to get them involved as well. Just drop them in. Little parts here and there. Probably come in as customers to the toy store. Or just, you know, you run into them around town. That would be cool to have everybody involved that I have uh, come across with in my entire life thus far anyway that would be awesome but i would probably no again i would definitely well i'd definitely give my mom a part in the film i'd probably cast her as my actual mom in the movie like i'd cast my actual mom as my mom in the movie um if the say script called for it so like i'd definitely give her a part in that regard and like that's pretty much what the film would look like you know and at the end, sort of, like, this would be a romantic comedy, right? With an emphasis on the comedy. And I know, like, 
as I said in the beginning and in the introduction to say like Michelle's part in this film or like what I would you know what would be like my dream co-star who would be my dream co-star like she's super funny super witty and like she's just on it right she's a total pro and I think you know with an emphasis on the comedy like that would just be awesome to have her as say like my co-star on this film and I would be the executive producer unless I could twist the arm of say you know Jerry Bruckheimer or Steven Spielberg right you know what I mean like hi guys you want to like help me executive produce this movie or give me a boatload of cash you know maybe I'd pitch it to Disney I don't know Um, and then you know in terms of directing the film I would probably want to get like Chris Columbus who did I think the first two Home Alone films yeah I'm pretty sure he did the first two and um, that would probably just wrap it up you know and like One last bit part, just because everybody says that there's like this debate, and I think even Remy Harlan put it to bed, where Home or where Die Hard is actually a Christmas movie, and I agree with him, and I've said that for years. I would probably get Bruce Willis. I would knock on the door and say, "Listen, Mr. Willis, I just need you to make a walk on and like stare deadpan at the camera, please. Like, if you could just turn and then like stare right down the camera lens." just, you know, poking, almost breaking the fourth wall to where we're acknowledging that Die Hard is actually a Christmas film, even though Bruce Willis himself has said that it isn't. And I think Remy Harlan just cleared up that it actually is. And there's so many people that actually think it is, like myself, and I agree with that sentiment, where, you know, Die Hard is actually a Christmas film. So another bit part would be, like, Bruce Willis just walking on and then turning and then staring right down the camera lens and then just smirking that would probably that would just that would make my day that would make the entire movie for me if I could get him to do that but you know like I said with everybody involved that you know I would want to get involved on this project it would be an immense undertaking it would be massive but it would be worth it to me because you know it's no secret I love Christmas I don't hide it and I'm a giant fan of Christmas music and movies and everybody that I just listed off in this both audio and video form of the Beats and Speaks podcast. I am a, I am a fan of every single person. Everybody I listed, I'm a fan of. So, you know, this would this is what my ultimate Christmas movie would look like. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's the last one for the year. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we will see you in 2021. Again, my name is Lee Dickey. This has been a special both audio and video form of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. All the links to follow me on social media are down in the description. The link to my official website, LeeTDickey.com, is down there as well. Thanks again for tuning in. Please rate us five stars and leave us reviews too if you would. Please and thanks. And we will see you all and talk to you all in the next one. All right, I'm Lee Dickey, and I'm signing off. Peace, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Season's Greetings, and we'll see you next year. Okay, well, I almost forgot. Lastly, for real this time, music. Who would handle the music in this ultimate Christmas movie? It's a combination of things and a combination of people. John Williams is right at the top of my list, so he'd be there. Home Alone, Star Wars... He's done a plethora of things, but those are the two that come to mind. Danny Elfman, Batman, The Simpsons. He was in Oingo Boingo in the 80s. Going to a party when no one's still alive, and so forth. Okay, and lastly, the last contingent of this musical combination to who would handle the score and the music in this Ultimate Christmas film, the acapella group... Rockapella, perhaps if you are my age or even just slightly younger or even a bit older, you know who they are from either Spike Lee's Do It Acapella or Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? You know, uh, they've got a plethora of Christmas music, their catalog is extensive. You can look them up. I mean, they are amazing. Where in the World is Carmen San Diego and Spike Lee Do It Acapella? 
those are the two things you're probably going to know them from, but they're absolutely amazing. They've done uh, commercials for Folgers, Almond Joy, and just a plethora of other things. But that's who I would want to handle music in this ultimate Christmas film that has just been swirling around in my head and is perfect because this is coming out on Christmas Day. Anyhow, for real this time, thank you all for tuning in. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Find us on your favorite podcast app and player of choice. Rate us five stars. Leave us reviews, too. Find us on YouTube under Lee Dickey TV. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe once again. And we will see you all and talk to you all in the next one, which is in the next year. And I mean in 2021. All right. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Season's greetings. And we'll see you in 2021.